got stuck paying two mortgages. Uh, you know, that idea kind of scares me. We just got out of um, consumer debt. So the thought of going back to. Yeah, you're not going to do that. You're not going to get to, stuck because you're not going to buy a house unless that one sells. So the way you would go about this would be put it on the market. And then accept an sells, offer, accept an offer, house. accept an offer contingent okay. upon contingent upon or subject to is the phrasing your ability to find a property that is suitable to you and your wife within 30 days. And then you go shopping with the 150,000 that you effectively have in your pocket. Okay. So but I'm out of there. You, you don't move, like the house and it's got ghosts of boyfriends past and, um, you know, I'm out, man. I'm, I'm, there's a lot of reasons to check out this deal. Now, here's the thing. You're selling in an up market, and you're going to buy in an up market. So just be ready for sticker shock. Right. right? Yeah, be sure you can get a house that you will like that's within your budget. Correct. Would it be smarter to rent and then kind of wait and see if the market goes down? I don't or? think the market's going to go down. It might slow okay. how fast it's going up. But it, but I don't think it's okay. going to go down. The number of times the real estate market, the residential real estate market in Akron, Ohio, has gone down overall is um, one time in 50 years, 2008. Okay. You know, it just doesn't go down much. Sometimes it's kind of sluggish and slow, and it's not increasing much. But you really don't lose value in real estate very often. It's very, very unusual okay. in a single family to lose value. Now, you can get in a bad neighborhood, or you can run the maintenance down and mess up the thing, right? But but in general, if you maintain real estate in a decent, reasonable neighborhood, in a decent, reasonable town, which Akron certainly is, then you can, you know, you can pretty well be assured it's going to go up. It's just lately it's been going up at white-hot rates. It's kind of hockey-sticking, you know, up and to the right. So that, that's a problem, but... But guess what? You're selling in that market and you're buying in that market. So you just give yourself some latitude. And, you know, if you go out there for 30 days and you absolutely can't find anything, then you you have the right to step out of the deal. You've made that deal in your contract and you've not messed anybody over. Now, Dave, in a hot market like this, are there sellers who go, I'm not going to take that deal where it's contingent? It's not a seller. He's the seller. Yeah, for the for on the buyer side. But they it would go, just well, be contingent upon simultaneous closing is all. And there's not, you know close them both the, the same day and it shouldn't be a big deal yeah i mean it might be there might be a buyer who wants all cash no contingencies no appraisals no inspections there's people doing stuff like that but you just can't buy that house because you got to get yours as to close yeah but you can find you know you can find people that'll sell a house contingent upon the closing of yours that's under contract that's really not Especially in a hot market. It's not that big a contingency. It's not that big a problem. So uh, it'd be different if it's contingent upon the sale and hadn't even put it up for sale yet. That one's a little tougher, but uh, in, in, in a hot market like this. Open phones, 888-825-5225. Roger's in San Antonio. Hey, Roger, how are you? Hello, Dave. Thanks for taking my call, and how are you all? Better than we deserve, sir. What's up? Well, let me give you a quick rundown, and then my question is uh, about my wife and I both being 75 and wanting to protect uh, our assets. Uh, the quick rundown is uh, we have zero debt on anything. Way to go. Uh, retirement in- Thank you. Retirement income is around 98005 uh, which is net. And um, let's see, we have 93000 invested in five stock funds uh, through two investment companies. Uh, we have over 370000 in uh, CDs, bonds, and fixed annuities. Uh, net worth is about $1.4 million. Risk outlook, uh, and that's the reason I'm calling, uh, we spend less than we make. Uh, we're very, if not ultra-conservative, and we want to protect what we have. No high risk, no high yield type of thing. What, what's right the, now what's the have, other million in? Uh, two houses and land. Okay. Okay. So you 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 worry about risk, um, yeah. but you still managed to put together a million four in net worth. Way to go! So what's your question? Well, thank you. Uh, well, we we've got uh, this money that's uh, ninety eight. Uh, no correction, ninety three thousand in um, investments, and then over like I said, three seventy in CD bonds and fixed annuities. But CDs are now insultingly flat. And so we're trying to say, well, what do we do with CDs that are coming out of maturity now? I've got one, for example, for 122000 that's out 
just as a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. And um, so we're wondering what would be the best thing, uh, given our very, very co- conservative risk level, uh, go to what? Would I-bonds be one thing, for example? No. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do, but here's the thing. You're taking two kinds of risk. If you don't outpace inflation and taxes, you're losing purchasing power. So that's one kind of risk. And you've been accepting that kind of risk for quite a while with these stupid butt CDs and these underperforming bonds you're talking about. I'll tell you what, hang on. We'll talk about this a little bit when we come back from the break. I want to make sure we unpack this beautifully for you because it's a really good question. George Camel, Ramsey personality with me today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Our last live show of the year before Christmas is always the giving show, the giving edition of the Ramsey Show. And we need some stories from some of you that have been on the receiving end of someone being very generous and it changed your life or helped you during a rough time or whatever. And maybe you were on the giving end. Maybe you tipped a waitress 100 bucks, or you gave Thanksgiving dinner to a family that couldn't afford it, or maybe you paid somebody's light bill for a year. I don't know what you did, but generosity is the highest and best use of money, and so we always want to encourage generosity. It's why we teach you to have some money, and uh, so we're going to do this show, as we always do, a giving show. It's a, one of our uh, Ramsey Show traditions, and if you want to be on the giving show and you have a great story, we need your stories. We need you to come on. Uh, so what you do is you go to RamseySolutions.com slash ask, RamseySolutions.com slash ask, and put giving in the subject line. Kelly and the production team will be in touch with you. We'll get you on the air, make you part of the deal. We're talking with Roger in San Antonio. Roger, 75 years old, million four net worth, got $93,000 in mutual funds, a $98,000 income, 370000 in underperforming CDs and bonds and so forth, wanting to know what he can put it into with virtually no risk because he hates risk. Is that a fair summary of what you told me so far? Yes, sir. That was right right on. Okay, thanks. So what I was saying going into the break is there's two kinds of risk. One is the risk of losing the money, which is the risk you're worried about. Putting it in something and it goes down in value or worse than that, it completely evaporates to nothing. And that's the great fear of someone who is risk averse. I'm risk averse like you are. Okay. But sometimes in an effort to avoid that kind of risk, we embrace fully another kind of risk that we didn't even realize was there because the average inflation rate for the past 72 years has been 3.2 years, 3, 3.2% according to the consumer price index. In the last year or so, it's been, of course, a whole lot more than that. We've got crazy inflation with all kinds of weird crap going on with whatever the economics mess is that we have right now. And, and so it's even worse. But let's just use 3%, you know, 3.2 or 4%, 4.2, right in there. Somewhere in there is about every year we see a gentle increase in prices over the years. You're old enough like I am to have seen that. So if you don't make that plus the taxes on the investment, you're not even breaking even. And so you need to right. make about 6% on your money or you're losing purchasing power. You're losing money every year. 
And so if you're not running fast enough away from that kind of risk, but not so fast that you run over the cliff on the other kind of risk, you'll get tackled from behind. And that's what you've been experiencing. This 370,000, I'll give you an example of that, how, how, how poignant this is. Can you imagine what four million or what $400,000 would be worth um, 15, 16 years later if you left it in a coffee can? Well, I can tell you, it would be... 1.6 million is what it should have been in a decent, something making 10%. That's what it would have come out. And if you left it in a coffee can, you know, it's got, it's 400,000. So you lost 1.2 million in potential growth during that 16 years by burying it in a coffee can. A CD is not much better. Yeah, that's true. So that, that's what I look at. Now, having said all that, I'm not a gambler. I don't like losing money. I work too hard for it. So I'm not playing any fad stuff. I'm not done. I'm just looking for tried and true stuff. And so, and I'm thinking about what my timeline horizon is. And, and, you know, okay, so if if I'm going to leave the money alone a year, what's safe? If I'm going to leave it alone three years, what's safe? I'm going to leave it alone 10 years, what's safe? And here's the interesting thing. If you look at just, for instance, a a simple uh, index fund, an S&P 500 fund, if you leave it alone five years, the number of times you actually would have lost money is less than 3% of the time. And the average annual rate of return would be north of 10%. Average. That's a 10-year horizon. That'd make you 85. But here's the thing. You're likely not going to touch this money. It's likely you're investing it for your kids. Yes, sir. That's true. So and you, grandsons. Yeah, so you have a 10-year horizon or a five-year horizon. You, you know, you don't have a short-term need for this 370000 so that's why at 61, as a risk-averse person, I'm very comfortable when I have a long-term time horizon investing in something like some conservative, very easygoing, boring mutual funds. And all the get-rich-quick guys make fun of me, but they, you're just a boomer, Ramsey. You don't understand. You're an antique dinosaur. You don't, understand like how this, you don't understand how all these get-rich-quick things work. Yeah, I do. I've lost my butt in them. I know exactly how they work. And so I don't do them anymore. I don't like risk. So anyway, that's my pitch. So you're saying, hey, you can move this 370000 over to some conservative mutual funds, and the chances of you losing money over a five-year time horizon, very slim statistically historically and it's less depressing literally than putting it in the cds or the bonds so that's the move where's this income coming from roger the, the ninety-eight thousand. uh ninety-eight thousand is um my civil service retirement uh, air force reserve retirement and a little bit of social security cool so you're not touching any of these funds anyways you're going to be able to live off of that for the rest of your life what's the what's the guarantee on all of that income It'll obviously be, all that'll be there yeah there's not no that's going away thank you for your service yeah by the way yeah thank so, you so here's another thing that helps me with risk and i'm not again it's not a gamble and i'm not i'm not putting the money up there but here if let's just say that uh you pick the worst mutual fund in the history of man and you lost all the money and you're not even going to put it in one fund so this is not possible okay let me tell you how many growth stock mutual funds have gone completely broke to zero. None. Ever. Okay? Because all those right. companies that they own would have all had to have been worth zero. So you would have had to make like Home Depot, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Hewlett Packard, IBM, and Apple all worth zero is the only way your mutual fund is going to be worth zero because all those stocks are in your mutual fund. Okay? So, but let's right. just pretend you lost the whole thing because because I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm doing and I told you about something bad, okay? So if you lost the whole thing, you've got a million-dollar net worth with $100,000 of your income. You're okay. You, can, you can't emotionally stomach the risk, but you can mathematically stomach the risk. Follow me? Yes, sir. Conceptually, I, I, I'm not depending on that money. Uh, exactly. Not actually, not, not depending on that money uh, for anything. And so it's really going to go to the daughter and grandson exactly. who are doing very well. Exactly. So what you've got to do is you need to – what? Uh, let me tell you this. Okay, so when I buy real estate, um, I buy in my town where I grew up, and I know what that neighborhood is. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And so I can remember, because I'm old, I can remember when that house sold for a fourth or a third or a tenth of what it's selling now. 
when I drive down the road. I mean, I sold that house for forty-two thousand dollars when I was eighteen. I'm sixty-one. That house is two hundred and forty-two thousand, or, or three hundred and forty-two thousand now. I know that, right? So I can look at the history. It's just in my. It's imprinted in my brain because I've driven past it. So I'm looking at the historical data on that street. I've watched that neighborhood go up or come down, deteriorate or clean up or regentrify or whatever's happening. I'm watching the historical data on the neighborhood, and because it's in a in quotes air quotes good good neighborhood and it's got a historical 25 40 50 year track record of going up in value i don't think i worry about my real estate so right. here, in my point being if you're gonna do what i'm suggesting take your time and really understand with your smart investor pro or with your investment advisor uh the history if you really look at the history and say how many times on this mutual fund in the past 30 years, would I have lost money? You know, if you looked at uh, Investment Company of America, ICA, one of the biggest funds ever, or Fidelity Magellan, one of the biggest funds ever. If you just, I'm, I'm not recommending either one of those, but they're old funds and they're huge. If you go back and look and say, okay, over 40 years or 50 years, under what scenarios would I actually have less money than when I started? You're going to get really comfortable with that level of risk once you see the historical data like driving down that street in the neighborhood. Yeah. You'll sleep better at night, Roger. Do the math. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2 and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, on the debt-free stage, Anthony and Katie are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Welcome, welcome. So how much debt have you guys paid off? $132,000. Yes. All right. How long, did that take? how long did that take? 19 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? 95 to about 140. Cool. Where do you all live? Hendersonville. Hendersonville. Oh, right here in Nashville. Okay, mm -hmm. good for you. Good for you. And um, what do y'all do for a living? I am a pharmacy data analyst. Mm -hmm. And I fix cars. Oh, good. <laughs> good for y'all. Perfect. Okay. So, what kind of debt was this? Thirty-two thousand. Oh God. If, credit if, cards. Yeah, credit cards. Car if, loans. If there was a, a store that had a name on it, we had a piece of plastic for it. Yeah. Um, just all kinds of dumb tool bills, everything. Wow. <laughs> so you're normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So what happened uh, 24 months ago to start this 19-month journey? Oddly enough, I was I was working, and I was working on a car, and that was back in the day when Facebook would just play videos, mm -hmm. and I had my phone over on my toolbox, and your music came on, and I, for some something told me in the back of my mind, don't skip this one. Because normally, you know, growing up in Nashville, you hear about Dave Ramsey and all this, well... For some reason, something told me, don't skip this one. 
I played it, and it was somebody that was going through the same things we were. Uh-huh. And it was their debt-free stream. Oh, wow. And I believe that was the first time that God spoke to me. Yeah. And went home and told her, hey, you know, there's this, there's this process that we can do, and, you know, maybe it'll work for us. And one step at a time, um, you know, started in January because we rolled into the, the new year mm-hmm. making good money. Mm-hmm. With nothing to show for it. Right. Right. And it gets old. It yeah. does. You get you get tired of being tired. <laughs> yes. You know, and and this, and then you hit then you hit a pandemic, right? Yeah. <laughs> In the middle of trying to do all this. Right. Now that's fun. Yeah. yeah. Did that help your income or hurt it? It helped me. I work in healthcare, so at one point I was working three jobs. Yeah, I bet. And yeah. the the pandemic didn't affect me. The tornado did because oh. where I was working it caved the shop in. <laughs> ah. So yeah, we were out of work for a few months. Till they found a place to set up shop, so to speak. Well, yeah. they rebuilt it. Yeah. Oh, they had to rebuild the whole thing. Oh my gosh. That's wild. So you guys were kind of on on a spending spree, and you got to this point where you went, "We can't live like this anymore." What kind of sacrifices do you have to make? Were you selling things? I know you were working some extra jobs there. What kind of things happened for you guys to feel the progress on the journey? Well, we, I, I'm the social butterfly, mm-hmm. so not going out to Texas Roadhouse <laughs> every week and not going out with friends and not going to concerts and that kind of stuff is, is what we sacrificed, really. You know, if we made yeah. that a step in the baby steps, Texas Roadhouse would become very <laughs> offended. <laughs> Just target them and go, you can go it's somewhere else, but you attack. can't go to Texas Roadhouse. Can't do it. <laughs> so yeah. you were cooking at I home. I like it. You had Texas Roadhouse in your house, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. We well, brought that, it home. Making plans with friends, you know, we'd tell them, we'd love to hang out with you, but instead of going and spending $40 to go eat and mm-hmm. tip and all this, mm-hmm. why don't, we'll cook something, we'll come hang out, we'll play cards. Yeah. And we had, you know, a group of very solid friends that were on board and very supportive with that because it, it was all about the fellowship. It wasn't necessarily about going out to eat. It was mm-hmm. just the social aspect of, of mm-hmm. being together. Exactly. And, and going out to eat is not really about the food. Mm-mm. You know, because you could buy that same food for about ten cents on the dollar, what you pay at a restaurant if you just cook it at home. You know, and, and probably a better, food, probably a better food in a lot of cases. Mm-hmm. No offense to Texas Roadhouse, but you know, there you go. <laughs> Not a personal attack. You just have to throw peanuts on your own floor. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But, yeah. Who's cleaning that up? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it sounds like you guys had some great cheerleaders. Did you have anyone that thought you were crazy for doing this thing? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. We had we had people that said, you know, there's no way it'll work. Um, you know, there's. It's 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 old school philosophy. It's outdated. You know, you, you can't do anything without credit or leveraging debt or anything mm-hmm. these days. But mm-hmm. then you know, it comes around May, and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna sell my truck and let's uh let's let's move this on. So, sold a beautiful Duramax that I had Ooh. to uh, Carvana, and now I'm driving my. Um, you don't like it being called a Dave car, so I'm a beater. Okay. Um, I'm driving a, uh, a 2002 Buick Regal. Woo! The High Life. Whoop, 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 That's whoop, classy. Whoop, 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 whoop. Touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you don't have any debt, and so now you can start to save up and buy and drive anything you want to, right? right. Bigger, bigger plans yeah. than that. Yeah. Um, a, a big proponent of what actually kicked this journey off is, do you mind if I, okay. It's, uh, it's fairly emotional. But, um... For six years, we've been dealing with infertility, mm-hmm. and we're looking at doing in vitro fertilization, which <laughs> every attempt is fifteen thousand or more dollars. Yeah, yeah. And um, better investment than a Duramax. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll get better returns. One hundred percent. I like so this. Yeah. Cool. That that is our. That's wonderful. That is our why. It's a big that's why. A, hey, that's that's uh, you get freed up, you can do that, and then it doesn't break the bank, so to speak, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, sometimes they hit first time, sometimes they don't hit first time, and, and it's not going to be the end of the world. Right. Emotionally, it'll be an up uh, a roller coaster, but financially, you'll be able to do it, right? Yes, yeah, sir. pretty cool. I'm so proud of y'all. That's an awesome goal. Thank you. It's very cool. I can't think of anything better to do with money than babies. <laughs> It's about the best thing you can do with money. That is a good investment. They'll take care of you if you treat them right. 
Yeah. Well, hypothetically, I don't know about that part. If you take care of them and treat them right, they will bring you grandbabies. Now that that's better. That makes it worth it. But yeah, if I don't know how great grandbabies are going to be, I'd have been nicer to their parents. But there you go. So, <laughs> hey, good stuff, you guys. That's amazing. I'm so proud of y'all. Okay, sum it up. When your crazy friends that were making fun of you for being crazy, not the supportive ones, the other ones, uh, say, okay, you paid off $132,000 in 19 months, making 95 to 140. How did you do that? What do you tell them the key to getting out of debt is? Stay focused. Embrace the suck. Mm. Amen. Because life sucks either way. You know, there's there's gonna, hard parts. You're going to pay a price. Right. So sacrifice a little bit for a better tomorrow instead of spinning your wheels living the same way day after day like we were. Yeah. I can see y'all five years from now with a big old pile of money and a couple kids. I can't wait for that. Pretty cool. It's for All us. go on a Texas Roadhouse. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. In load, the load them, up, load them up in the Buick. No, the Duramax is gone. Load them up in the back. Buick. We're going to Texas Roadhouse. I like it. And paying cash, by God. There you yes. go. Oh, you crazy man. I love y'all. You're amazing. It's very cool. Very cool. We got a copy of the Baby Steps Millionaire book for you. An early release copy because the book comes out in January. It's on pre-sale right now. And we'll also give you a copy of the Total Money Makeover for you to give to one of those supportive friends or maybe even one of the ones that weren't you can just give them a hey this is what we did by the way and we're debt free how you like me now <laughs> so there you go hey was it worth all the trouble absolutely 100 percent. how's it feel now that you're free 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 <laughs> <laughs> just that huh? very good good for you guys powerful I love it what a rock star couple That's ba- i almost said put a texas roadhouse gift card in the book oh that you give to the unsupportive friend. At least they get a meal out of it. They get they, one time. Well, you got to put it on page sixty-two, so they have to read down into it to find it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like this. This is good. Fun, fun. All right, Anthony and Katie, Nashville, one hundred thirty-two thousand paid off in nineteen months, making ninety-five to one forty. Didn't skip the Facebook video. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. I'm We're debt-free. debt-free. <laughs> yeah. That's how it's done. I love it. That's how it's done. Well, a high percentage of these debt-free screams are people that have gone through Financial Peace University. It is uh, available through a Ramsey Plus membership now, and uh, including the Every Dollar Premium version, which connects to your bank, and the whole thing runs together. The average family pays off $5,300 in debt and saves $2,700 in the first 90 days. That's an $8,000 change in position in just 90 days not a bad return on investment but you gotta do the work and you're gonna pay a price just like just like anthony said you're gonna pay a price so a price of mediocrity or a price to not be mediocre ramseysolutions.com slash fpu if you want to give financial peace university to someone for christmas or you want to sign up and say hey 2022 i'm coming at you baby ramseysolutions.com slash fpu Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Christy is with us in Fremont, California. Hi, Christy. How are you? Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Appreciate it. Sure. What's up? So my, my question is, um, I just turned 68 in November, and I've been uh, holding on to getting my Social Security benefit so that I could maximize it at 70. But now I'm having people tell me that do the math, you should take it now and do something with that extra money because by the time um, 
it would take me like to age 84 to break even if I don't take it now. So I just want to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, I'm in the boat of taking it. And one reason is you can do way better investing that money yourself if that's what you want to do and depending on your financial situation mm -hmm. than waiting to get you know a few extra hundred dollars a few years from now. So that's what I'm doing if I'm you. And again, when you crunch the numbers, you can see, man, it's going to take me a long time to really ROI on this decision. And so once you do that, it becomes clear that taking the money now and having control of it is going to be in your favor. Yep. He's right. The one thing, you know, the one thing I have been doing because I was the last birth year that I could take uh, half of my husband's, so I have been doing that for the last two years, and that's basically been paying my Medicare costs, which is great plus some extra. Mm -hmm. um, but I sold my business um, this year, and with capital gains and all that hoo ha, my Medicare costs have gone through the roof. So I'm thinking maybe I should just take my own benefit and have a little extra, I mean, more left over to do something with. So. Amen. Amen. That's but, amen. But, All but, right. but mathematically, what George is saying is right. If you didn't do that with it, if you just said the way to do the math is not, I mean, you can take it and use it. That's Sure, I would do that, but mm -hmm. that's why I said amen. But mm -hmm. if you just took the ma if you took the money now and you invest it from now until seventy, the amount in that investment would offset the difference and w the extra you would have made if you waited till seventy to start taking it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like I've I've looked at it, and yeah. right now it's the two years is about. Um, sixty-eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars is what it would be, mm -hmm. and um, like say that it'll be more than that, that because you'll be investing seven. it all along. Yeah, that is true. I would be doing something so with it. Besides. You end up with a hundred thousand uh -huh. bucks, paying you ten thousand dollars a year. That's eight hundred bucks, and you're not going to make eight hundred bucks extra by waiting until seventy. No, no, that I'm staring right at it on this piece of paper, and you're. <laughs> certifying that for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So yeah, that that's the way this works. If you take the Social Security, and you, but folks, if you do this at 63, you can do it. I mean, whenever you want to do it, it depends on what your tax situation is. But if you can, uh, aside from taxes, if you just take that money and invest it and say, okay, in an investment, here's what it would be worth at 65 versus 63. And here's how much more I would get at 65 if I wait. You're going to get more off of that lump sum investment income that that lump sum creates than you would have extra in Social Security payments because the Social Security system sucks. It's a negative rate of return. And, and oh, by the way, when you die, that $100,000 we're talking about with her is going to be in the investment. When you die, if it's at Social Security, guess how much you get? Zippo, zero, nada. You don't leave it behind. They keep it because, well, they have to prop up their broken, destructive system that they've engaged all of us in. It's um, Social Security is the DMV of retirement. If you just think going to the DMV and how frustrating and horrible an experience that is, that's what Social Security is when it comes to retirement, just to help you out. It sucks. And right. both, uh, both part of the government. So go figure. Who knew? Government efficiency, an oxymoron, like Fauci math. All right, Dylan is in Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, Dylan, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Great, man. What's up? Oh, uh, nothing. Um, I just had a couple questions for you. Okay. Um, so I've got about $40,000 in savings, and I want to figure out what's the best way for me to invest it. How old are you? 24. Good for you. Way to go, man. That's impressive. So you've got you. 40 k It's just sitting in a savings account right now? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Okay. And what are you saving this money for? Oh, uh, well, I don't, nothing specifically. I just, uh, I had a house. I bought a house when I was 19 years old or 20 years old, and I just made a bunch of money off of it. And part of that savings is from that money. And so now that I have all of it, I want to be able to turn it into something else. Yeah. So are you renting right now? No, I'm actually living with my dad while uh, we're, I'm building a house. But this will be money left over after the house is built. And paid for in cash? Not in cash. Oh, mm. okay. Do you have yeah. any other debt? This is all the debt I'll have. Okay. Do you have any other money saved of any kind? Uh, no, this is all I have. Okay. Or, so, I mean, 40000 like, out of what I'll have left over after I have to put the money down for the house, it'll be about 
fifty something thousand, but I was going to keep some of that money for emergencies. So you need this money for the new house. Uh, this will be the forty thousand dollars is money that I'll have left over after the down payment for the house. But you oh. could put it as an additional down payment. All right. So you yes, have an sir. emergency fund in place. What do you make a year? About ninety thousand. Okay, baby step one, save a thousand bucks. Baby step two is debt free but the house. Baby step three is your ten thousand dollar emergency fund. You've done it. Okay. Baby mm-hmm. step four is fifteen percent of your income going into retirement. You need to start that now out of your budget. Fifteen percent of your income should be going towards retirement. Baby step five is yeah. kids college. It sounds like you're single, are you? Uh, I have a fiance. Okay. And a new uh, six month old child. Okay, then kids' college is baby step five, and six mm-hmm. is pay off your house early. And so this money would be used to as an additional down payment to get you closer to having your home paid for and above your 15% in baby step four. And then above your kids' college in baby step five, we're going to apply everything else to this house and get the house paid for as fast as we can because a paid-for house with a $100,000 income, dude, means you're going to become a baby steps millionaire yeah. very quickly. And if you haven't gotten the loan yet, make sure you do a 15-year fixed-rate loan, and I want that payment to be no more than a quarter of your take-home pay. So start crunching the numbers, see how much you've got to put down to get there, and the more the better. If you can put 30%, 40% down, that's fantastic. Steve's with us in Indianapolis. Hey, Steve, how are you? Fine. Thank you for taking the call. Sure. How can we help? Real quick question. Okay. Real quick question. We are, uh, my wife and I are in our mid-70s. We have a home in Indianapolis and a home in Florida. No debt. I have a a million and a half in the market. And my concern is with the Biden administration's uh, policies and so forth as to whether I should take that out of the market because I'm afraid of the inflation and everything else and what it might do to the uh, market. Mm, Okay. In, In what way is it in the market? What's it invested in? Well, it's in equities and and bonds and so forth, so I would have to put it in. I'd have to keep it in the market uh, because of any capital gains, uh, but uh, just put it something a lot safer than maybe equities and so forth. When you say equities, you're buying single stocks? Yes. I, well, I, I've, I've got a, uh, uh, a manager that manages my portfolio. Of single stocks. That's the equities. You're not buying mutual funds. No. Okay. That's what I was asking. All right. Yeah. So you got a lot of risk. Okay. Well, congratulations. You're a millionaire. Well done. Couple of houses. You've worked your butt off, Steve. I have. How much of this did you inherit? None. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, I would begin to gradually move some of it out and maybe buy some real estate that you pay cash for. Probably going to give you a little more peace of mind. Will not give you the return that mutual funds will give you, but it'll give you a lot less hassle. And uh, depending on what kind of real estate you buy, of course. And so, uh, and I definitely would be moving from single stocks uh, in a managed portfolio into mutual funds. A million and a half is tough to have a real wide diversification with that amount of money. It's a lot of money, but and you've done wonderfully. But I'd try to be in mutual funds uh, first, and then I'd begin to move some of it out into some paid for real estate. If you want to hide from Biden, that's a better place to hide than in mutual funds. This is the Ramsey Show. It's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. 
I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Sonia is in Boise, Idaho. Hi, Sonia. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank you for taking my call. My pleasure. How can we help? Well, um, going to a divorce. Oh, no. Sorry. 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 That's okay. How long have you been married? Just a, a short um, four years. Okay. Just not not long. <laughs> um, however, um, we are both up free. Um, he's cashing me out of the house, mm-hmm. which is great. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting sixty thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, we just paid off all the debt, uh, not the house, but um, we don't have anything in savings other than the thousand dollars, which were is really nothing yet. So with the sixty thousand, I'm wondering what to do with it. Whether I should. Mm-hmm. Put it in savings and wait and just rent or mm-hmm. put 50 towards the house and mm-hmm. save the 10 for an emergency fund. Yeah. How old are you? 46. Oh, okay. What do you make? 54. Okay. Good for you. All right. So you're in pretty good shape then. Finan- yeah. Financially. Your heart's broken. Right. But, I mean, your checkbook's okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. Well, that's good news. Uh, now, the mortgage, he's getting a new mortgage on the house to take you off the old mortgage and to buy you out of the equity, right? Correct. Good, because I don't want you on that mortgage when the smoke clears. Good. Okay. Right. All right, so it's a clean break in that regard um, in terms of the right. business aspects of this mess. Um, first marriage? No. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, you're only 47, so um, uh, we'll go. We'll let the curtain go up and take the third act, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Th- this money is for your new life, and what do we want your new life to be? I would recommend as much as your emotions are there, and which means you're a human being, okay? Because you have emotions. It's good you're not a psychopath. Um, and so your heart's broken, and you cry, and that that that's a healthy thing. Um, that you probably rent for six months and kind of let yourself, let your spirit get settled before you buy. I think you might be less likely to make a bad decision buying six months from now than you would right now because you're kind of discombobulated. Would that be unfair? No. Okay. No. And, you know, just get settled in your job and settled in your stuff and just get you a little apartment, nothing fancy, six-month rent. And, um, you know, in the fourth month of that, start looking for a house. Okay. Maybe. I don't okay. know. Does that feel better than just rushing out and doing something right now while all this crap's in the air? Right. Well, yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, regardless of, of what you do, you've got to have that three to six months emergency fund in place. And like Dave's saying, I've, I've been where you are, Sonia, and it's a really hard position to be in. And the best thing you can do right now is just take a pause and heal emotionally and let that money sit in a savings account. It's not super exciting, I know. But what you can do during that time is start to save up as well and make sure that whatever that next house is, start dreaming about that. Dream about the future and focus on that, and you'll be in a great financial position to do so. Tim's in Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, Tim. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. Appreciate you taking the call. How are you guys doing? Better than we deserve, sir. What's up? Good. I got got a question that I don't hear addressed very often. My wife and I are both proud baby step millionaires. Way to go. I I have a term life insurance policy that's going to expire next April. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if I have to replace it. How old are you? Replacing it at 62. Okay. Replacing it at 62 is a lot more expensive than it, when it, when it was at 42. <laughs> I heard the rumor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so, uh, well, uh, so I mean, the the question is, if you die without any life insurance, with the money that you all have, does that money create enough income for her to live on? Yes. Okay. So you don't need life insurance. You're self-insured. Okay. I was just, it was, I just wonder if I should rush, you know, if I should just go ahead and get another 10 year term or not. I, I do have a hundred thousand in, in through work covered that, which they pay for. Yeah. Well, um, you'll have that anyway but, then. Uh, but you know, yep. so your net worth is what? Uh, 1.2, 1.3. What's it invested in? 
Um, mostly mutual funds, um, and I've got about 400000 equity in the house. Okay. All right. And, and so she can live off of the income that that has created, correct? Correct. Yep. Yeah. And are you healthy? Yeah. I okay. do have a, 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 you know, a little bit of heart issue, but right. it's... But 69, that's, that's, 69, these mutual funds will have doubled again. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, every day you live, plan, she's better off. I plan on working five more years. I just yeah. my plan on work another five years. Then yeah. Every retired. day you live, so, yeah. she's better off. Yeah. Mathematically. Right. <laughs> it's a good clarifier. I just, like I said, I, I never, I had never heard it addressed yeah. as far as, you know, when is it okay not to have life insurance? <laughs> when when uh, kids are grown and gone, the house is paid off, and she can live off the income of the nest egg then you don't have any need yep. for life insurance. You have done financial planning. You've gotten out of debt, become a millionaire. Way to go, Baby Steps Millionaire. And you are, uh, you know, she's taken care of. You are self-insured. Your need for life insurance goes away. We are so conditioned by the life insurance industry to think we always need it. They even named it Whole Life. You're going to need it your Correct. whole life. They, they've they conditioned us to think we have to have it, you know. And the only thing that, that the only Part of insurance that lasts forever is their need for a commission, and so it, you know, uh, no, thank you. I, I, I you know, I've, I'm really, 61 really, really, really. and I've got hundreds of millions in my net worth, and um, I just now talked Sharon into letting it go. Yeah, but she had it. It was just an emotional crutch, and it didn't cost that much. But I'm like you. I'm at the point now that renewing it is freaking ridiculous because I'm we're about the same age, yep. and uh, yep. you, even if you're healthy, right? And so. Um, but, yeah, it, it was SWI for a while. Sharon wants it. It had nothing to do with financial planning. <laughs> it had nothing to do with mathematics. And so uh, she'd well, rather we, have that than sure, another diamond. We sure appreciate what you all do because it, we, we followed the plan, and, and uh, it worked. I mean, it's uh, you know, it definitely works. So, Hey, we appreciate you, man. You're, you're what this economy is all about, and you're why we come down here every day. That's cool another to hear. Baby Steps Millionaire. We followed the plan. Self-insured. That's what this new book's about. It's kind of boring. I like boring if it means it's millionaire like, status with no stress. It's like, how can I be Tim? That's what Baby Steps Millionaire is all about. Tim, 1.4 million, 62 years old, no debt. All these, and do I need to keep this expensive life insurance? Nope. How can I be Tim? I'll teach you how. It's called Baby Steps Millionaires, how ordinary people build extraordinary wealth and how you can too. But if you want get rich quick or sexy, don't read my stuff. There's a book for that. It's your book, not mine. But I, <laughs> we don't know. I mean, we don't even have that. No, no. We don't have that at Ramsey. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. time listener you probably heard a debt-free scream from somebody that changed their life with financial peace university and if you've gone through the class yourself you're finally discovering some freedom with money maybe you're a baby steps millionaire already maybe you're just beginning to change your family tree but you can see where you're going to leave a lasting legacy christmas don't have to give your loved ones just more stuff i need some more plastic stuff that's what i need from tarjay i don't think so uh, i would rather have a little hope 
A lot of people need some hope. They need a plan that will give them hope where they can see a light at the end of the tunnel that's not an oncoming train. Maybe a gift of a Financial Peace University membership would be a great idea on Ramsey Plus. Yeah. They'll learn the proven plan to get out of debt, save money, become wealthy, just like you did, and outrageously generous like you are. And now Financial Peace University, of course, is a Ramsey Plus membership item. And so uh, you can jump in there and take care of that. Just go to RamseySolutions.com slash FPU, RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and new promos they run all the time. You're going to save even more. Use the promo code, the magic word, Ramsey, to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Eric in Rhode Island. I'm 28 years old, and I've been living with my parents since the pandemic began. During this time, I've paid off over $50,000 in student loans and a car loan. However, I still have approximately $73,000 left in student loans to pay off. I make a little over $65K a year at my civilian employer and serve part-time in the National Guard, usually bringing home $15K a year. I'm afraid of moving out of my parents' place for two reasons. One, I don't know how I will pay off my debt in a timely manner, and two, I fear the only places I can afford will be undesirable locations. Do you have any advice you could offer me? Yes, we do have advice that we can offer you. So you're 28 years old, you're making 80K a year, and you've got 73000 left in student loans. And you've already been paying on them. You paid off over 50 k So you absolutely can pay off this debt in a timely manner. Uh, the fear of living in an undesirable location, well, you can quelch that by getting a roommate. And undesirable, I can handle undesirable if it means long-term gain, if it means I can get out of debt faster. Now, if you're talking about unsafe, that's a different story. But if it's just somewhere you wouldn't want to live for a long time, that's okay. You're not going to live there a long time. So you're going to live on nothing. And if, if that means getting a roommate or staying at your parents' place, I'm okay with that. I mean, you can easily get out. You make $80,000 a year. There's no reason you need to live in their basement any longer. Uh, but you can pay this thing off in 18 months, two years max, making what you make. So there's not really an excuses here other than, you know, de- decision paralysis. Eric, let's pretend that you're – we're going to fast forward way up into your life. And you have a daughter that is 24 years old. And when you think of your daughter, you smile. She's your little princess. You've raised her. She's smart. She's self-sufficient. Does she want to date you when you live in your mother's basement? Do you want her dating you if you're her dad? Answer is no. So go get you a place, dude. You're 28 freaking years old. And you'll get out of debt. You'll figure it out. People making $80,000 pay off $73,000 all the time, and they don't live with their parents. It works all the time. And you need to do that. It's going to be so good for you, and it's going to be good for your mom. It's time she's ready for you to leave. Or your dad is. Or both of them are. Um, They may be really ready for you to leave. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't know. It just um, There's a, a developmental thing here that is really good for you. And so, yes, it's going to slow down mathematically your ability to get out of debt as fast. whoop de doop And, yes, making $80,000 a year, you can find a place in Rhode Island to stay. I think you're going to be okay. You're going to make it. But you need to get out, dude. So, George, the producer, James, just handed us an article. It's juicy. It's a juicy one. Well, okay. <laughs> This pisses me off, all right, because the um, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, brought to you by Elizabeth Warren, that's where it came from, um, was put in place to protect the consumer. They were put in charge of a piece of legislation that's been in place for 30 or 40 years called the Federal Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. There's federal law that dictates how collectors have to behave or they're in violation of federal law when they're trying to collect from you. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is in charge of the Federal Debt, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act regulations and uh, fines and, you know, you know, basically protecting the consumer. So what did they do under this administration? Decided to 
help out the collectors instead of the consumer. So they just, new rules approved by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau that took effect, this is from NPR, that took effect on Tuesday, dictate how collection agencies can email or text people as well as message them on social media to collect unpaid debts. So now they can hassle you on Twitter, your Facebook account, text you, and email you. We're a part of protection at the Bureau did they not get. They just unleashed the hounds on the Internet. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. You need to read the title of the place you work. Good God. I thought it was bad enough when my mom joined Facebook. And now the collectors are on there, too. The whole gang. (laughs) You can't stop. Everyone's watching you, George. You know, a way to fix this is... Don't be on Facebook. But, you know. Good luck. Well, yeah. it's easier now. Everyone's going, you know, they're on Instagram, yeah. TikTok. Well, you have to have something like I've got where I pay people to do this stuff because I can't stand it. But this is what's crazy. It says they can attempt to join your network by sending you a friend request, and they must give you the option to opt out of being contacted online, and any messages they send do have to be private. So they're not going to go posting on your public page, Dave. Don't worry. Yeah, that would be a violation of Privacy Act, a whole other act. The rules are really disappointing and concerning in a number of ways, says April Newhoff, a staff attorney for the National Consumer Law Center. Hello, April. That's an understatement. Uh, Yeah, disappointing? No, this is just ridiculous. This is what we in the South call, we just let the fox in the hen house. That's a good saying. I like that one. (sighs) Here's what's crazy. Chomp, chomp. We are going to see... So much spam come out of this. It says, allowing debt collectors to email, text, and use social media to contact consumers also gives criminals a new avenue to try to swindle people out of their money, a practice Knuhoff expects to increase in the future. All right, I get a bunch of crap on my Apple phone updates that I don't want, and they force it on me, and I have to go in and turn it off or turn it on and so that people aren't watching me and all this other bull crap, all these things they do with this technology. I'm getting just paranoid. But... They're going to have to put a thing on the Apple phone. Like oh, yeah. Block collector text. Select. On or off. And that maybe, you know, there you go. That'll work. So um, I did just, somebody just showed me the damn, I'm so technology stupid. You're going to look at me because you know I'm stupid. But, um, yeah, you can turn off, uh, Not the phone doesn't ring if it's an unrecognized number because the 73,000 calls I get a year on oh, my yeah. uh, warranty for my car that I need to buy, which is hilarious. You're calling Dave Ramsey's phone. I mean, come on. But, um, yeah, I mean, all those are blocked now, and so automatically they don't. it doesn't ring my phone. So I can, we're going to have to have that selection for collectors. Oh, yeah. Apple's going to have to protect us because the Protection Bureau won't protect us. Oh, boy. And, you know, the weird thing about sliding into the DMs here on, on your Instagram account, if the only people sliding into the DMs are the collectors, that's a sad life. we got to pay off this debt. Get rid of it. Leave them on red. You can't ghost these people. They're going to be after you. Oh. <sighs> That sums it up. Wow. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Can't even live up to its title. Oxymoron. This is The Ramsey Show. On baby step number one, huh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it.
George Campbell Ramsey personnel. He is my co-host today. Welcome to the Ramsey Show in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Travis and Betsy are with us. Hey, guys. How are you? Great. Good. How are you? Very cool. Where do you all live? Mont Bellevue, Texas, near, ah. near Houston. Very cool. Well, I mean, we have folks wear a lot of T-shirts on the show and to do their debt-free screams and so forth, but it might be fairly easy to guess that you're here to do a debt-free scream because you have a paid-for house. Whoop. Whoops. <laughs> Those shirts gave it away. <laughs> you're weirdos, huh? Yes. yes. Wow, I love it. Very cool. Well, the great shirts, by the way. He's got a house with paid stamped across Very it. Very simple. For I For those of you that are looking deeply in your radio and can't see what I'm talking about. But yeah. Very cool. So how much have you paid off? 144000 Very cool. How long did this take? Three and a half years. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? 150 to 170 Very good. And what do you all do for a living? So I'm a chemical engineer. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a school counselor turned stay-at-home mom. Ah, very good. Very, very good. So 144000 What's this house worth? 375 conservatively. Awesome. Woo. Very cool. Very cool. How much y'all got in retirement? Uh, 950 or so. Baby Steps Millionaires. Look at that. There they are. Look at them. Look Way at you go. guys. You're double weirdos. Woo. I love you. Way to go. How old are you, millionaires? I'm 37. 36. Woohoo! Touchdown! <laughs> this is incredible. Start the wave right here. Okay. Ready to go? Ready to go, George. There we go. go. All right, there we go. I did it. Woohoo! <laughs> Very good. I love it, guys. Congratulations. Okay, so uh, the last three and a half years you've been working on the house. Tell us the whole story about your journey and how you got Ramsey-fied. So our journey with Ramsey really uh, started back uh, 14 years ago when uh, I graduated college. So I, I had always been, to always been told to uh, invest in retirement once I got a job, but I didn't know how to do it. So I looked for books, uh, found Total Money Makeover, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, from there uh, I, I just in did the investing advice. So uh oh, so Dave Ramsey's investing advice made him a millionaire. <laughs> uh oh. Well, Unfortunately, yes, yes. I didn't think that was legal. Yeah, I thought I thought that I thought he was a boomer. I thought you were a fraud, doing. Dave. I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grifter. <laughs> That's a great name this is too. A grifter. grifter. It's strong. Just strong. It's yeah. amazing how this works. Way to go, you guys. Did you guys have debt, like consumer debt? So uh, the the rest of the story is so fast forward ten years. So our church started a uh, financial peace momentum campaign back in oh, 2017, yeah. um, and so they started advertising that. I, I saw that as a way. Remember uh, total money makeover. I saw that a way as uh, getting us on the same page because I had been doing most of the financial stuff for our household, and I just wanted to set us up for a better uh, future. So Good. we cool. got we started on it in January 2018 and just. It's been off uh, okay. to the races ever since. All right. So, Betsy, he, he says we're going to this financial class at church, and you said what? <laughs> uh, we're a good team, so there was no convincing. We okay. just went and Okay, sure, I'll go. And, yeah. Sure, I'll go. Mm -hmm. Well, you're sweet. Wow. She, she, she works well with me. <laughs> okay. And so you went to the class, and uh, did you, what did you think? Did you think it was going to be boring or crazy, or what was your preconceived notion, and then what was it really like? Well, I should have known when I met Travis, he was reading The Total Money Makeover. Okay. So it wasn't, a, Dave, it's not a, you're not a new concept to me. Um, it was pretty much what I thought. Um, okay. It was good to learn together, to do the class together. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. And it sets it up. And during this process, you made the decision to come home and be a full-time mom. When um, I had Spence, he okay. who's six. Okay, yeah. perfect. About Very a, good. About a year or so before. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Wow. Way to go, you guys. Wow. How does it feel to be 100% debt-free and have a net worth over a million dollars? It's a bit surreal. I, I, I don't know that we've been debt-free for a couple of months now, but um, and this is our first vacation to Tennessee, so this is a, a big vacation for us, just enjoying being debt-free and yeah. uh, enjoying family time. That's that's what we wanted to do. So, What's your big thing you want to do now that you're out? So, travel. Yeah, travel. travel. Yeah, I mean, that, that's our why, trying to create memories with our young kids. Mm -hmm. So traveling all kinds of fun places, getting them to experience all kinds of different things. That's in life. very cool. That's worth it, yeah. We've had some wonderful trips. Ramsey spends some money on experience, man. I tell you, we do. We'll do it on, more than we will anything else. 
And so, um, really, that's a good that's a good spend for the dollar. Way to go, guys! Very, very cool. All right, you've been doing this a long time. You got this thing dialed in. Both of you been through Financial Peace University. You've hit. You've touched every base. Baby step seven. Baby steps millionaires. People ask, how did you do that? What do you tell them the key to getting here is? I would say that the key is just to live, uh, be okay with living below your means. Mm -hmm. Um, People have boats and huge pools and cars and car payments and all kind of stuff that they have to pay for. And um, just we don't go out to eat that much. And we have a garden and we eat out of our garden. And um, we've just lived below our means and made a plan and stuck to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, I'm the nerd, so the Every Dollar app was uh, really key when we started it in 2018. It made uh, budgeting fun. You know, it seems, seems kind of weird, but that was uh, what did it for me. Yeah, that's a big deal. An engineer who likes budgeting. <laughs> Go figure. It's who amazing. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. He would project the Every Dollar app on the TV, and I told him, because I've listened to many hours of the show, <laughs> I've got 17 <laughs> minutes. That, 17 minutes. So he, he took over the Netflix watching, and he said, nope, we're streaming the budget, baby. That's amazing. It. Nothing says romance like a budget streaming to the TV. Uh, that's that's right. fun. Way to go. This is great. Yeah. Fun, 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 fun. Who are your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you? Uh, so our our, uh, our parents are very uh, helpful in this, just uh, cheering us on. And they came of, along with you? Yeah, yeah. Her, that's uh, my, uh, my Betsy's mom. parents. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, All right. You raised millionaires. That's pretty cool. Not bad. Kids that turn out. That's incredible. This is good. I like kids that turn out. Yeah. Every parent's dream. This is awesome. Yeah. Do the kids have t-shirts on too that match? Yes. Uh, Uh, Slightly different t-shirts. Let's get them up here. What are their names and ages? Uh, So you got Spence. He's six. Mm Mm-hmm. And Hattie, she's four. Okay. Okay. Keep uh keep Hensley's weird and we own it. Hashtag, hashtag we own we it. Own it. <laughs> she already knows what a hashtag is. I'm very impressed with this That's generation. That's very good. Of <laughs> course dancing. she does. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she can fix your iPhone, George. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, way to go, you guys. Hey, we got an advanced copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you to celebrate the fact that you is. Way to go. It comes out January the 11th, but we're going to give you a copy today and a copy of the Total Money Makeover as well, and you'll have that to give away. So very 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 cool stuff. All right, it's Travis, Betsy, Spence, and Hattie from Houston, Texas. $144,000 paid off in three and a half years. House and everything with their retirement. Baby Steps Millionaires making 150 to 170 in their 30s. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, three two, one. one. We're, We're debt free. There it is. Touchdown. Oh, man. Get on Financial Peace University. Get on the same page. Push through. Do the baby steps. I mean, this stuff, it's getting boring. (laughs) In the best way possible. It's just so predictable. Yeah. And this is not a plug for your book, Baby Steps Millionaires, but it's amazing how many people just follow the plan and they go, oh, my gosh, we're millionaires. And Boom. it's almost like accidental, but it's not accidental because they, here's the thing. We find it all the time, and their numbers matched it too with the, the study we did that we first revealed in Chris Hogan's book, Everyday Millionaires. And we put the whole study in the back of the Baby Steps Millionaires just for you to read, by the way. It's the largest study of millionaires ever done. We find typically the paid for house is about a third of the net worth, and the other two thirds is their big retirement plan. And they put money in mutual funds. And it's just not rocket science, people. Um, is a millionaire a billionaire? Nope. A lot of difference. Billions, a thousand million. A lot of difference. But a million, it's more than most people got. And you can do it. And it's doable. And you can retire with dignity. And you can travel and change your family tree. And pretty stinking cool. This is The Ramsey Show.
George Camel Ramsey, personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. John is with us in Boise, Idaho. Hey, John, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you, sir, for having me on. Sure. What's up? Um, so my question is, uh, I'm working right now, um, but I'm also in flight school, trying to cash flow, going through uh, helicopter flight school. Good for you. And anyways, um, my question is, at what point um, with it working a job, it, when the job gets so dysfunctional amongst your coworkers, uh, is it right to just quit and try to find another job? Um, because I work in direct sales. I work for a roofing company. I'm good at my job. My, my bosses appreciate what I do, but trying to I'll, I'll, all I do is set up uh, uh, inspections for uh, project managers to get on uh, wind damage roofs for folks. So you know we do free inspections, and uh, the goal is you know if we can help them out with uh, the roof, you know, get see if we can get the roof uh, paid for through insurance if they have you know enough wind damage on the roof. Mm-hmm. Anyways, all I do is drive around and and talk to folks, and. It's getting really. My, my bosses are great. My coworkers are not, and I'm just like trying to figure out how to balance, I guess, flight school, or, or, or and, and getting in a different job possibly. How old are you? Twenty three. And you said you're you're on the road talking with clients most of the time. How much interaction do you have with these coworkers? Um, it depends on the day. So. Um, we have you know, a daily sales meeting and then um, you know a lot of texts, a lot of phone calls. Sometimes you see them during the day. I, I have the option to ride with them, uh, like drive you know, with one project manager and just roll around with him for the day. Or I can just drive around myself talking to different customers. So I've chosen for most of my job to just drive around myself because I think it's a better use of time. Um, you can talk to more people that way than having two guys rolling around in one vehicle. So, um, but, yeah. How long have you been doing this? Uh, and this job I just started in September. I've been doing sales for a couple of years. What okay. do you make? So, so wait a minute. Stop. Stop a second. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. No, we'll go ahead. What do you make? That's good. Yeah, what do you make? Uh, right now I make uh, it's 100 percent commission based. Uh, I make about twenty three to twenty five twenty five hundred dollars a month. Okay. All right. Well, number one, not, there's nothing not nothing was... wrong with looking for another job and getting a different job. Okay. Yeah. However, there may be something here for you to learn. It's maybe a learning opportunity. Yeah. And sometimes in our 20s, uh, God puts us in a place where we're learning. And it could be that you learn to interact with your supervisors and explain to them your leaders, which you seem to like after four whole months or three whole months. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe there's some uh, behaviors that they can work on. Uh, for, for you, meaning these people need to learn to behave. What are they doing that's so toxic? Well, the, I mean, the biggest thing is, uh, I would say, is I, I set an appointment. I set a, you know, I set a time, say like two o'clock for an inspection, and consistently, um, my guy, my project managers either can't make it, cancel it, reschedule, whatever, and they just and they end up losing the job because of it, um, and that happens. Uh, <laughs> Very, very often. Well, that's a broken um, business model. That's not bad people. There's something else going on. They're either lazy, well, they're not, shouldn't be doing the job, or they've got the system set up to where you should have set hours that you can book somebody, and then they show up. The company's losing money because of this, not just you. Well, I, yeah, I would agree. Like, so um, your your frustration is not what I would take to your leader. I would take to your leader that the customer is frustrated and we're losing sales. I think we're losing, you know, half of the sales that we shouldn't be losing. We should be doubling our sales if they just showed up on time. So what we need, boss, is a system that that uh, when I book an appointment that the guy actually shows. Now, how can we put that together? I'd be happy to help. Show me what to do. And it might be you can help yeah. them solve this problem. That. Yeah, that that it could be an option. I'm, I've talked to my bosses about it. My bosses, like I said, my bosses are awesome. I have no gripe. They're not them. awesome. They They're watching a stupid thing happen right in front of them. Gotcha. I'm yeah. awesome. I would have kicked somebody's butt by now and fixed this. 
That's called owning and running a company, okay? So, you know, yeah. I mean, they may be nice guys, but this is inefficient, frustrating for you, frustrating for the customer, because either you are booking times you shouldn't be booking because you don't have a blocked out time for your people to go in, or something else is going on. If you want to go to flight school, that's fine. If you want to change jobs, that's fine. But, dude, you've been there for three months, and you are 23, so, you know, take a chill pill and work on this a little bit and see if you can't help them fix it. If you can't help them fix it, eject. But if every time you have a little bit of a rough spot, you eject, you're, all you're going to do is be in the air from ejecting all the time. You're just going to be flying all the time. And well, he isn't butt. going to flight school, so. Da, ba, ba, da, bum. Yeah, yes. there we go. Yeah, right in the Boom. helicopter. Yeah, okay. Got him. But, uh, yeah, and besides that, and let, there are a few helicopter jobs that make good money, but not tons of them. Um, it sounds like he doesn't want to be in sales long term, but right now he needs to focus on getting enough income so that he can save up and pay cash for flight school. And he's not making great money. It's 100% commission. He's bringing in 2300 a month. 30,000 30, bucks a year. There's know. better sales jobs out there, 100% commission, if he can do well, sales. Well, if they close double what he'd been closing, he'd be making 60. So he's losing half the sales to this stupid system. So I don't know. But, uh, um, you know, yes, you should look for a job if you can't get this fixed. And, um, yes, you should cash flow flight school, and it's going to take you some time. And, yes, you need to consider what you are paying to become a helicopter pilot versus what that job pays. Because it's not big money in most cases. Um, you know, private jet pilot makes good money. Uh, helicopter pilot, not so much. There's a few cases they do, a few situations they do, but most of those are probably taken by somebody with a lot of experience and, you know, you're, you're running a copter in, in you know, a, a different situation. But it, it's an okay career to get into, and it, but it's got a long climb. No pun intended. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Maggie is in San Diego. Hi, Maggie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Sure, um, what's up? So basically, basically, I own a house. I uh, moved with, in with my aunt to help take care of her um, in the later months of her life. And she's put my name on the trust for her house. So my question is, should I sell my house? Because I'm in California and the housing market is white hot and I can make a lot of money on the equity and pay off her house. Or should I just really focus on paying off her house while I rent out my house and let the renters pay that off for me? What is her life expectancy? Um, I would say no more than a year. I, she's on hospice, so mm. um, it's not I'm that sorry. much longer. But I'm yeah, but, I wouldn't pay know. off anybody's house that was not mm -hmm. in my name. So mm -hmm. when she passes yes you can pay off your house her the, what becomes your house at that point um mm -hmm. and it's left to you in a trust via a will correct um it's as far as i know it's just a simple trust i don't think it was a full-on will because we just started doing it when i moved in with her okay. and we're just finalizing I, I, let me it. help you with a piece of real estate this expensive as far as i know doesn't cut it okay you got to get in there and know and you need to sit down with an attorney and verify that this thing is going to you. And exactly the mm -hmm. vehicle has been put in place to exactly execute that because this is coming at you really fast. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you guys half butt did this paperwork, you got a real problem. So you need to fix that now while she's alive and able to do it. And so get in there and is really it? know the details of exactly how this property is going to transfer to you. If you want to go ahead and sell your house now, that's fine. Just put the money in the bank, and, and then when she passes, you pay off the new house that becomes your house, was her house, because you did this paperwork perfectly with great detail and great diligence. Um, otherwise, you'll become one of those nightmare stories that calls me here and don't do that. Good hour, George. Good times. Well done. Well done. Good job, Ben and Kelly in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts.
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show. Where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. George Camel Ramsey, personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. 888 5225 is the number. Sherry is in Kansas City. Hi, Sherry. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi there. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I have a 22-year-old son who is in an apprentice program getting paid, so no college debt, but, and he's going to be finishing that program in about a year. Looking ahead, um, and he's working, or he would be the one calling you. I'm looking ahead. He's wanting to know what you suggest in how he builds credit, because right now he has none because he, he hasn't purchased anything. He's purchased something. He just didn't use debt. That's correct. He's always paid cash. And he asked you to ask us? Did he come to yeah. you wondering about this? <laughs> And he he did because we we he's grown up with with um, Dave Ramsey and and knowing the knowledge behind it because his parents we lived by it so. Well, what are your thoughts on how to build credit or if it's wise to? Well, I don't know. That's why I called you because we we didn't start using Dave Ramsey until we were almost thirty years old and going by his plan. So by that time, we'd already established credit through purchasing a house and. Um, a credit card. Um, mm. I'm confused I, I which Dave how, Ramsey I, I, you've been following. Because this Dave Ramsey never told you to build your FICO score or build credit. We told you to get out of debt and stay out of debt. Does that sound familiar? Yes, correct. I'm saying that we were at that point, and then we met you. And yeah, I know, but you said your son grew up with Dave Ramsey, and his first question is how to build credit. So he must have missed something. Well, other than knowing to just save... And that's what he's doing, um, but we don't know. I mean, <laughs> okay, you know, he'll be saving for a long time. Sure. And so we're just needed to know I, your recommendations. So the way I was raised at 22, I thought the same thing, and I was like, I got to build my score. That's that's how you live your financial life. And what we found is that the best way to build the financial future for your son is without a credit score at all. And that's very countercultural. That's very against the grain. But he's already done it by paying cash for school. And so the question is, you only need a, does he need a credit score if he's not going to take out any more debt? And that's the only reason why people really build their credit score is so that they can have a high score so that they can take on more debt. And so if he's already on board with the Ramsey plan of living his life without debt, then he can do all of the things that everyone else can do, and he can do it without a credit score. And that includes... He's going to pay cash for a car. Therefore, he doesn't need a credit score because he doesn't need a car loan. He can do manual underwriting when it comes time for him to buy a house, which means they're not going to look at his credit score. They're going to look at his overall financial picture. And you can get a mortgage without a credit score. And so but really, there's everything no else you're here. paying cash for, and so you don't need a credit score. The purpose of the credit score is to get you in debt so that you can get more in debt, so that you can get more in debt, and you need to build up your score. Precisely, out of the 10,000 millionaires that we surveyed and asked them how they became a millionaire, the number that said that they became millionaires because of their great credit or great credit score was precisely zero. Mm -hmm. And so building the credit score is not a goal that we would teach you. We would teach you to avoid debt, pay cash for things, and, um, you know, if you're going to get a mortgage, it's the only time we don't yell at you for debt. Uh, because it, because all the other debt is a prohibiting you from winning. And really, the mortgage is too, but at least you can get it paid off, and at least it's going up in value. And so, um, you know, th that's the one thing. But other than that, so the answer is I would not build my credit score. I would not worship at the altar of the great FICO. It turns out he is not a very good provider as a god. <laughs> 
That's for sure. Yeah. And Sherry, I've got a resource for you. If you go look up the Fine Print Podcast, you can go to fineprintpodcast.com. Let your son listen to the episode that we did titled The Dirty Truth Behind Your Credit Score. We dig into this. It's short. It's enjoyable. He'll have a great time. And it will unpack why we say you don't need a credit score. And we'll show him how to do all of those things. And it's by George. And so it's a lot nicer than me. And so you're going to like it. He'll, he'll enjoy it. Thank you this. for admitting that I'm nicer than you. Well, it's not a hard admission. America has been waiting for this. Most people are nicer than me. Um, I'm actually really nice because I'm really telling you what you need to go win because I love you. But I just... Uh, it hurts to hear. I, I just, put a little well, sugar Well, I don't it. really put much icing on it. So it's just the cake. Okay. So, but, um, and I'm kind of in a hurry because there's a lot of people that need this help. So that, that's, it just makes me get to the point. And 30 years of doing this, it's just, you know, okay, there you go. That's what you need to do. And so there it is. And yeah. Yeah, but so yeah, go listen to the fine print. By the way, all the episodes of fine print was Robin Hood, but the last one of the that last was the season, last one yeah. of the last season of the first season, and now we're going to do another season, and we've Excited got about you know, we're, we're thinking maybe a timeshare episode. Oh yeah, reverse Definitely. mortgages could reverse be a fun mortgage one. episode. Oh scams, we we got to do scams. Oh scams, there's for, so many for real, out there. Not, I mean, for real scams, we talk about a lot of things that are the same as a scam, but like real people that get scammed and real scams artists out there. Those are, that's a really good episode. That'll be good. We, we chose a podcast where there's endless amounts of content, so that's good. There's always ways people are getting screwed when it comes to money. That's true. That's true. So The Fine Print, one of the Ramsey Network, well, the Ramsey Network's newest podcast, and very popular, by the way. It's done really well, George. Congratulations. I appreciate that. Well, well thanks well for all of you who listen out there. Jason is in Lansing, Michigan. Hi, Jason. How are you? Hey, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? I didn't sing here. Uh, hey, my question is um, about some student loans that my wife has. Uh, basically, she's got about 23000 uh student loans to pay off, um, and then the 0% interest rate ends, and the payments need to begin at the beginning of, or at the end of January. Uh, she's been working her tail off while doing her master's classes, and she's got enough to pay it off right now. Good, do it. Um, and I guess my question is, should she pay it all off now yes. and, and end up paying no interest and all that? Yes. Or or wait until maybe good old Joe implements one of those forgiveness plans that I've been hearing so much about? You're going to be dead before that happens. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he he may get around to it, but if you wait on Washington to be your blessing, your life's going to suck. I believe that. Yeah. I, I don't support the, the government bailouts by any means, but you know I'm not an idiot either. And unless it comes if to we you, go ahead right? And pay this off, and then February comes by, and they say, "Oh, here's ten thousand dollars off of your loans." That's and not going to happen. Oh, well. it's it's not coming. Okay. Dude. It's not coming in February. Okay. It you okay. know there, there's a saying if you know, old people used to say, uh, uh, older than me even, like if something's really difficult, they go, "Well, it takes an act of Congress," meaning it's going to take forever. <laughs> Well, guess what? In order to forgive student loans, it takes literally an act of Congress, which means it takes forever. That island of misfit toys can't get anything done up there. Even if it was the right thing to do, they can't get it done, and this ain't the right thing to do. Take so, control. Yeah, you dude, you got the money. Write the check. Be done with it. Move on with your life. Say, thank you. I got an education. Thank you. I'm debt free. Now let's get on with making some money, being outrageously generous, and helping other people with it. That's the plan. Don't wait on Washington to bless your life. Your life will suck. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com.
Well, with all the high-tech real estate apps and home browsing sites available, you might think no one needs a real estate agent to buy a house these days. That's very wrong. In fact, 90% of buyers who bought a home last year used a real estate professional. Why would they do that? Well, if you've got an experienced agent, a dedicated agent, it's their number one job to help you win. Hey, it's a wild world out there. It is a crazy market. This is not amateur hour. This market's wild. House prices go up. You get in bidding wars. A top agent is an expert negotiator who knows what it takes to make a winning offer. Plus, the seller almost always covers the commission for the buyer's agent anyway, meaning you get all the benefits of an agent for free. I mean, what's there to lose by using an expert? Nothing. So if you're going to list a house for sale, you don't list it right now by yourself. You get a pro in your corner. If you're going to buy a house right now, you get a pro in your corner. Check out our nationwide network of the best performing real estate agents in your area. They're called Endorsed Local Providers because we endorse them. They're local and they provide you with help. They're ELPs. These real estate agents are Ramsey Trusted. They're committed to putting your values first and they are at the top of their local market. RamseySolutions.com slash agent to find a trusted, Ramsey trusted pro who can help you buy a home. RamseySolutions.com slash agent. Brandon's with us in Oklahoma City. Hey, Brandon, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave, thanks for having me. Sure, what's up? Um, so I'm a truck driver, and I make about 45000 a year gross. I had... 17000 saved, but I spent most of that money on getting my CDL, and uh, I had financed it originally, come across your show, and it was stay out of debt, so I said, you know what, I'll go ahead and pay it off, so now I've got 8000 saved, and um, driving a truck, I'm able to put back 1000 a month currently, so I, I don't know how much a person needs as a safety fund or really how much. I, I remember seeing something about 25% of your of – your, um, your monthly, maybe your take home being your mortgage. I'm still a little confused on that. And how, how do I know when, when I'm able to buy a home and how much should I have saved more or less? So if you're following the baby steps, baby step one is to have a thousand dollars saved. You have that baby step two is to pay off all of your consumer debt. You've got that all paid off. No debt? Yep, yep, no debt. So baby step three is where we save our three to six months of expenses. So what does one month of expenses for you look like right now? Uh, eight, eight fifty. 850. Okay, great. So I would set aside, maybe that looks like five or seven, eight grand for you. Okay. For a fully funded emergency fund. And beyond that, the rest of that money can go to 3B, which is where we're going to save up a, for a down payment on a house. So what I would be doing if I were you is looking at homes in my area that I would want to buy. And the parameters are pretty easy. We have a great mortgage calculator on our website that can help walk you through this. But what you're looking for is to have 10 or 20% down. I love 20% or more because it helps you avoid something called PMI, private mortgage insurance. And all it does is protect the bank in case you can't pay. So if you can get 20% down and then have the payment on that mortgage on a 15-year fixed rate mortgage be no more than a quarter of your take-home pay, that's going to allow you to have the margin to continue on with the baby steps and pay off your house early. So there's a lot of numbers in there, but the key is to make sure that you've got that down payment saved. And I don't know what the houses are running for in your area. Have you done any research on that? Um, yeah, so in my area, I found a little um, – I'm seeing also for me, I can get away with a small home. I've seen them go for anywhere from forty to 60000 on a nice little um, one-bedroom, one-bath home. Nice. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, so if you save ten grand for an emergency fund, you leave that alone. That's your rainy day fund, all right? And then beyond that, you start saving your down payment. And, um, you know, if you save up fifteen or twenty grand and put that down on a sixty or $70,000 house, you're going to be just fine. Okay. Now, on a house or okay. a mortgage that cheap, you're probably not going to be going to a traditional mortgage company. You're probably just going to be talking to your credit union because basically you're taking out what for some people is a car loan. Okay. The regular mortgage companies won't do a little mortgage like this, a tiny one like this. So most of the time, anyway, if they do, they charge you too much. So your local credit union, your local bank is the easiest, the best way, the most efficient way to get a smallish loan like that, which the beauty of that is then you can turn around and just pay it off. Just keep chunking money on it, and you'll have it paid off in no time. And that'll be a very cool place to be, have a paid-off house, no debt of any kind, and an emergency fund. Wow. Very good. Good plan. Kelly, or Kenny is with us, rather. Kenny is in Savannah, Georgia. Hi, Kenny. How are you? 
Hello, Dave. Thank you guys for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Uh, so I have, um, so I recently came across your show about last month, and it really motivated me to pay off my debt. I was young, dumb, and stupid in the military, and I accumulated a lot of credit card debt, and I also financed the car, which is another stupid decision I made. Um, but I kind of follow your debt avalanche method uh, about three weeks ago, and I paid off uh, 5000 towards my credit card. So now I only have 16000 left overall debt for myself. My wife is different. She's a student right now. She's about to graduate with her degree. So I just want to know what's the best way to tackle that. Should I keep following the debt avalanche or just do the debt snowball? I already have an emergency uh, fund in place already, the baby step one. Gotcha. Okay. Well, at Ramsey, we don't teach the avalanche. We teach the debt snowball. Okay. Okay, and that's listing okay. your debts, smallest to largest, paying minimum okay. payments on everything but the little one, and attack the little one. We also teach okay. you that there are that when you are married, we are one. The preacher said, and now you are one. He didn't say, yes, and now sir. you are a joint venture. So how much wife does your how much debt does your wife have? So the the only debt that she has is the school, which is nineteen thousand. Okay, so nineteen thousand. I encourage. And then you I had encouraged her for her masters to do uh, a federal work there. That way the school will pay for um, that as she works for the school. So that's what she'll be doing. And what will she be making at the school? Uh, she will be a teacher, and it will be about um, 1500 a month. Okay. And what do you make? I make uh, 52 Good for you. Okay. Um, a year. A year. Okay. All right, so you got about a seventy to an eighty thousand dollar household income, depending on how many hours you all yes. work, and you've got thirty four thousand dollars in debt between the two of you. Does that sound about right? Yes, sir. So what we're going to do here is, do you guys have any savings right now? Any money? Just in the bank? myself. I'm the. I, I just myself. I have about uh, almost four thousand in the bank. Okay. okay. So if you're following the baby well, steps. Well, you're married, so that's hers too. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And you guys have one joint bank account. Uh, no, we do not. Ours is separate, but our savings, um, I create savings for both of us to have together. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. If you guys want to feel the progress of this thing, you're going to have to get on the same page, get one bank account, get the goal, get the plan, and do this thing together. Okay. Because right now, we'll it sounds that. like you're living two different lives financially. Okay. But what you're going to do is have that $1,000 for your starter emergency fund, and everything else is going to go towards the debt. And you're going to do the debt snowball, like Dave mentioned, list them all smallest to largest. And then once you're out of consumer debt, you're done with that 34000 we go back and we fully fund that emergency fund with three to six months of expenses. That's going to create this financial foundation for you guys to where you don't have money stress anymore. So, Kenny, what I'll do is I'll put you on hold. Kelly will pick up. We're going to send you a copy of the book, The Total Money Makeover, to show you exactly how to do this. Combine your finances, focus exclusively on the debt, listing your debts smallest balance to largest balance. That's the debt snowball. You pay minimum payments on everything but the little one. You attack the little one with a vengeance as fast as you can. No eating out, no going on vacation, no frills, beans and rice, rice and beans, scorched earth syndrome around the house there, no lifestyle. We're getting out of debt. How fast can we get out of debt making seventy to eighty thousand owing thirty four? Probably gonna take you about eighteen months if you're really, really intense. And the more intense you are, by the way, the faster you'll get out, because the deeper you'll sacrifice. Hang on, Kelly will pick up. We're gonna send you a copy of the total money makeover.
George Campbell, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Kyle is with us. He is in Des Moines, Iowa. It says on my screen, you're debt-free, Kyle. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. How much have you paid off? I paid off $63,359. Did you say 63 or 53? 63. 63 what? $63,359. Okay, $359. Good. And how long did it take you to pay this off? Just a little under four months. Good for you. Wow. And your range of income during that time? So kind of crazy. I actually went from unemployed to finishing this year grossing 150000 Cool. What do you do for a living? I am a full-time photographer and videographer. So I do a lot of weddings and family photos, sports, commercial work, you name it. I kind of do it all. So you just started your own business and it took off? Correct. Yep. So I lost my job. So a little backstory. So I actually went through a divorce 16 months ago. And then uh, not even a month later on my birthday, I actually got laid off due to COVID. Oh, my gosh. So I had a camera and I kind of just started hustling, Um, started shooting weddings, photos, like I said, um, family photos, anything to just keep a roof over my head. And with my finances, it got a little scary. Um, I had literally like less than a thousand dollars to my name and I just started this business. Um, And really COVID allowed me to run with this opportunity that I had. Wow. Wow. Good for you, man. I mean, you, you really, Thanks. you got after it. That's impressive. What kind of debt was the 63,000? So 58,000 was student loans and then 5,300 was my car loan. Okay. So that's what, that was your part of the divorce. You walked out with those things. Yeah. Well, yeah, the student loans was mine. Um, and then my car as well, I owned on my own. Okay. All right. And, and so yep. you got to knock it out. So what made you decide in the middle of all these crises hitting you at one yep. time that you're going to get out of debt? When my back was against the wall, it really, it was an eye opening moment for me that I really had no big picture with my finances. I had never really added up all my debt. So when I did that, it was really a shock to me. I didn't realize that I had over $63,000 in debt. Um, so I started getting very intentional with my finances And since I was self-employed, I had to refinance to keep the home that I was living in after the divorce. So I had to get a full-time job in the meantime. So that allowed me to pay off my debt extremely fast because I was working a full-time job, living off that income. And then every wedding, every photo shoot was getting thrown at my debt. Oh, wow. Okay. So even after you got laid off, you went back and got a full-time. Correct. Yep. Because I needed to refinance my house. Okay. um, after the divorce. Okay. Wow. That's incredible, man. You're resilient. Thank you. Yeah, I stayed really optimistic with the whole thing. And, you know, I, I, once I started my desk job eight months ago, I listened to you guys every day um, and listened to other people's debt free screams. And it really kept me motivated, knowing that that was just going to be a short stint in my life that I had to buckle down at that time and pay off my debt. And I kind of set a goal to pay it off in six months. Because my birthday was the date that the student loans were supposed to start back up with the interest. Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> right. It was an amazing six a months. present for um, Sally Mae. Yep. So by my by my birthday, I had all my debt paid off and $20,000 emergency fund fully wow. in place. Wow. Yeah, you went rice and beans, gazelle and tents. How did you te- like tactically pay that much in that short of amount of time? 63 k in four months is incredible. Did you just have so in- great cash flow? Yes, great cash flow, and I knew how many weddings I had coming up, and that's what really made me look at it six months before my birthday and six months before the student loans were going to start back up. I knew I could do it just doing the math with how many weddings I had lined up and photo shoots and et cetera while I was working my full-time desk job as well, just living off that income. Yeah, you just made a chunk in a short period of time. Yep. And I knew it was a short stint and now it's quickly flipping in the other direction, you know, as quickly as I paid it off. Now I'm starting to invest, um, with a smart investor pro and got a fully funded emergency fund. And it's just quickly going in the other direction as well. Amen. Way to go. (laughs) You're going to be a baby steps millionaire in 20 minutes the way you're going. Well done. (laughs) How old are you? Thank you. I am 27. Well done, Kyle. Fantastic. Great, great job, man. Great job. So proud of you. Thank you. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? So I was a nerd through the whole thing. Um, so I know budget is a a big a big one for most, and it definitely is for me too. But I would say find something that you love to do and that you're passionate about and find a way to monetize it. Because I think if you're really passionate about something, it will show in your work. 
and you'll make money doing what you love, and it won't feel like work. There you go. Where's Christy and Ken when you need them? Yeah, incredible really. man. Absolutely, <laughs> beautifully Beautiful. said. Yeah, that's that was Thank a home, that was a Ken Ken Coleman home run right there. I like it. Thank you. So well done, sir. Very very well done. Who were your biggest cheerleaders? My family was very supportive, um, and now I am with a, a girlfriend, and she has been amazing and so supportive through this whole journey for me, too. So it's helped a, helped a lot. They're definitely very important to me. I mean, you had to have some people in your corner. You, you lost a marriage, and you lost your job. Yep. And then you, yeah. hit, and then you hit COVID head on, and, 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 and you got 63,000 piled up in the corner over here getting ready to come down on your head on your birthday. You know, and so, yeah, you had to have some people in your corner pushing you and saying you can do this. Definitely. My family is super supportive. We're super close. Um, and I knew that this listening to you guys and thinking more long term, you know, obviously it was bad at the time, but I was thinking more long term, like I do want to fit, change my family tree. Um, that I'm thinking more into the future long term and definitely had support system with my family. Yeah. Well, you're definitely going to get there. You're definitely going to get there. So very well done, you guys. Man, I'm so proud of you. We've got a Thank copy you. of the Total Money Makeover for you to give away and encourage someone else and an advanced copy of the new book, Baby Steps Millionaires of Mine, which comes out in uh, January. But we're going to send you a copy early uh, to celebrate the fact that you are debt-free and on your way to being a Baby Steps Millionaire. That's the next step for you. So well done, Kyle. Proud of you, man. You're a hero. Thank you so much. Good job. Good job. All right, Kyle in Des Moines, Iowa. 63000 paid off in four months, making zero to one fifty. That's a story. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free. Yeah. <laughs> man, oh, man, oh, man. Nothing's going to stop that guy. You know, I was just thinking, that's very interesting because a lot of people, uh, he turned every one of those uh, lemons into lemonade. I mean, in every case, he, he, he flipped it in his language, and you could tell it had flipped in his head. And he flipped his language to where he's saying, okay, I went through this horrible thing, but that means I get to do this. And this happened, but that means I get to do this. Instead of like, well, I lost my job, and Eeyore is my spirit animal, and oh, it's bad. It's going to be bad. Oh, and then COVID hit, and I just can't get ahead. I sure hope Biden will send me more money. You know, he wasn't sitting around saying that. No, there was no wallowing. It was just like, all right, I got punched in the face. I'm going to get back up, and I'm going to make something out of this. And he did. I mean, he lined up serious numbers of jobs right there in, in a very short period of time, made enough money to clear the whole thing in four months. That's, I mean, he stacked and double stacked. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, all of it was just, oh, okay, well, while I'm while my heart is broken and I'm going through this horrible thing called a divorce, and while this is happening and while that's happening, I'm just going to take all these lemons and make lemonade and just get out. And, and his whole life is set up. But that's a, all of that was just a decision. It was a way of viewing this through a positive opportunistic lens rather than viewing it through I've been slapped and I can't do anything lens. I mean, yeah. and, and I guess... You know, sometimes people do that kind of in their nature, but sometimes that's just a decision. I'm just really going to choose abundance rather than scarcity. He had a lot of excuses to just let this, let these loans sit, yeah, yeah, wait for forgiveness. Exa- exactly Most right. people listening, they weren't going through stuff like that, and they, they can make the choice today. And just go, you know what, I'm going to be a Kyle. Nothing's going to stop me. This debt's going to be out of my life. Absolutely. Very cool. Very well done. Good job, Kyle. Great work, brother. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.
John 13, 35, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Charles Schwab said, the way to develop the best that is in a person is by appreciation and encouragement. That's true. And that's good. Open phones this hour. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host. And Daniel is in Maui, Hawaii. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Better than I deserve, sir. What's up? Hey, so um, I'm in escrow right now. I'm trying to buy this condo. Um, and uh, the guy wants 50000 over the appraised value. And uh, the market right now, everything's really high. And buying property here on Maui, everybody's overpaying. So I was wondering, like, do you think uh, is that a good idea? What's the price of the condo? Um, the guy wants five fifty for it. He got appraised for five hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. How old is the appraisal? Uh, it just got appraised um, like a week ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is this your first home purchase? It is. How old are you? I'm 29. Okay. And how much down payment do you have? Went down 20%. So you have a hundred and some odd thousand dollars to put down? Yeah. Where'd you get that? Oh, just, just working. And then I uh, do a little investing here and there. Find stocks. And selling socks. Okay. And what do you make a year? Uh, currently, um, anywhere from two hundred to two twenty. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you yeah, do? I'm what do you, what do, you do for a living? Oh, I'm a journeyman lineman. Uh, build and repair power lines. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, is there any other condos available that are not over market? Um, Sounds like you stumbled no, onto no, one every, deal and you fixated on this one deal. Well, because uh, all the other condos around here on Maui, if, if it's next to a beach, it's it's in somewhere around minimum like six fifty, you know. So I found one more inland, and uh, so for five hundred, we offered five seventy six, you know, because his asking price was five fifty, and then the appraisal came back way lower. And uh, just just for a three bedroom, two bath here is so expensive. And uh, so I, I thought it was the best deal, you know, that I could find. But still, fifty thousand over appraisal, you know. Hmm. So you're under contract on it, and the only question is whether you need to walk away based on the low appraisal. I would put a clause in there saying we'd only pay twenty five thousand over the appraisal. And, uh, but he's, the guy's not budging. He just wants to stick to 550. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Time to run, tell him to order yeah. another appraisal at his expense and get one for five and a quarter then. Yeah. Yeah. Can do that. Their closing date's coming up, uh, on the 27th. So, and right now, I, getting appraisers is, uh, takes a minute. I mean, if I'm in your shoes, I'm saying, hey, it's five, it's five twenty-five, or we're gonna walk, because right now it feels like he's trying to throw you guys around a little bit and make a little extra on the deal. But truthfully, if you guys waited a little longer, saved up a little more, you could get something for five fifty or six hundred. That's by the beach. So I'm not taking this deal as is, either way. If I'm you, yeah. It- Here's the thing. You want to avoid, Daniel, and you're not avoiding it, so I'm, that's why I'm saying it. You want to avoid the sense that, you are, uh, that you've gotten locked into the tractor beam and you're being pulled into this deal against your will, like, you know, and it's like, like it's, it has to happen, and there's nothing else, and it's the only way it'll do it, and, and the guy won't budge, and we can't do it by the 27th, and... You know, it's all pulling you straight into the deal, and and all the while you've got this sense that something's wrong, and, and that's what we're hearing when we're talking to you. The the way you're using your words, the way you're structuring your sentences, all of that is like I feel like I'm the, I, like I'm trapped, and I have to move forward in this thing, and it's not what I want to do. It doesn't feel right, and every time I do that. Uh, every time I talk myself into feeling like I'm trapped and I go do something that I know down in my gut is stupid, uh, it kills me. And 
uh, you know, you don't feel good about this. I can tell by the way you're talking it through, but yet you feel trapped and, and you're not trapped. It's just a stupid condo. There's a whole bunch of them on Maui. I've been there. Lots of stupid condos on Maui. Now, you may not get one for a while. It may be three or four more months. It may be something else. But later on, when you get the right deal that you don't have this weird feeling in your stomach about, because that's why you're asking the question is because you don't feel good about it. And uh, I've got a friend, uh, Daniel, who gave me a rule in business a long, long time ago. He said, when in doubt, don't. Pretty good rule. Simple. I love it. I wouldn't buy it, Daniel. Tell the old boy, five and a quarter, I made a deal with you. I will honor my word. I will honor my contract, and we will close on the 17th at 25000 over appraisal. Sorry your condo didn't appraise. I was willing to pay more, but I was only willing to pay twenty five over appraisal, and I'm still willing to do that. If you'd like to sell your condo, it is sold, Bubba. But if you don't want to sell it, I understand, and we'll keep looking. Your choice. I'll give you odds he's going to close. I'm with George. No, I'm not taking the deal. Not at any, not at a dime over a five and a quarter, unless another appraisal comes in, and I'm contractually bound to take twenty five thousand over appraisal at that point. You made a nice offer on that. Open phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. Jesse is in San Antonio. Hey Jesse, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi Dave. Hey, um, I'm George. My pleasure to talking to you guys. Thank you for getting my call. Sure. What's your uh, my question? question is, Dave. Um, my question is, should we should uh, both my wife and I fix the broken transmission from the camera I drive? A little backstory: I started your plan on June of this year. And uh, well, we lost them. Uh oh. Okay. Here's your rule of thumb. You add. You look at what the transmission costs, and or the repair on the car, and, and you ask yourself, okay, if I sell it as is with a broken transmission, because he's driving a hoopty, and uh, and so if you, the problem is the transmission may cost more than the hoopty, and, and so you know you don't put a two thousand dollar transmission in a one thousand dollar car. You don't put a $2,000 transmission in a $3,000 car because it doesn't increase its value. You could put a used transmission out of the junkyard in there, uh, and you do that for a few hundred bucks or something. You can figure, find some way to pull that off. That's fine. But if you're driving a $2,000 car that has a $1,000 repair, very seldom are you going to want to do that. You just sell it as is. You take that money, any other money you can scrape together that you were going to spend on the transmission, and you buy a little bit better hoopty that doesn't need a transmission. And, and you, you keep moving. You keep rolling. No payments, no debt. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's part of baby step two is you're sacrificing. You're driving the car you don't want to drive so that later you can drive the car that you want to drive. And you can upgrade over time. And then you can upgrade that car over time. But definitely don't go out and saying, well, we need a $10,000 car now, Dave, because we need something reliable. Because the last one crapped out on us. So yeah. we're not going to buy another $3,000 car. That's what happens. You, you start to make stupid decisions. People over Ramsey are unrealistic. <laughs> it's unrealistic to remain broke your whole life because you keep falling into the debt trap. Yeah. You have to live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. George is right. Drive like no one else so later you can drive like no one else. That's good advice. Thank you. I got it from you. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy. I know a guy. Well, I mean, the truth is it works. And the problem is when you're in the middle of where he is right now, it's a pain. Yeah. It's it's just you just get frustrated and exhausted from dealing with the crap and you just if you're not careful you just give up and go buy a car on payments. Yeah. But and, the most powerful don't do stories it. don't do it. They're the ones who, who use that pain and they go, This situation sucks so badly I'm that I'm never willing to do it ever again. Gonna takes. be here again. That's a good point. It's inspiring. That's a good point. Very well done. Good stuff. Good hour, George. It's been fun. Well done, Ben and Kelly in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We will be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there is ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus.
have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.